Kayla Poo. And I'm Jackie Neal. Here's a look at some of our top stories we'll be bringing you this evening. The Clarion Borough Council is debating making traffic changes along the 7th Avenue Main Street intersection. Clarion Borough also announced the dates and locations for the fall leave drop-off program. And coming up later, Stephanie Dugan will have a look at the TV5 Weather Center forecast. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld is in Saudi Arabia, the first stop on a four-nation tour aimed at maximizing pressure on the Taliban regime in Afghanistan. Meanwhile, President Bush aims to boost consumer confidence in the United States. Skip Lozier looks at the administration's efforts at home and abroad. Just a month ago, it... The president is facing a two-pronged problem, how to make this country safe from terrorism, and how to keep this economy from falling further into the doldrums. It's been a difficult three weeks for first graders at PS 130 in Lower Manhattan. Their school was choked with smoke from the terrorist attacks. Oh, no. President Bush tried, tried to reassure the children. This is what a great country this is. And the best way to realize this country is to learn how to read and write. During an earlier meeting with business leaders, Mr. Bush calls for aggressive action to boost consumer confidence. He believes that we ought to have 60 to 75 billion more dollars of uh, uh, stimulus. Meantime, the president says he will not block a move in Congress to make those who screen airline passengers and luggage federal employees. We think the American people expect no less, and we will deliver no less in this bill. Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld goes to Central Asia, traveling to Saudi Arabia, Oman, Egypt, and Uzbekistan. He's hoping for help to beef up intelligence efforts. While many in Congress disagree, the Secretary of Health and Human Services says the U.S. will not be caught totally flat-footed if there's a chemical or biological attack. We are prepared to respond, but there is much more that can and should be done to strengthen that response. Others contend a chemical or biological attack would simply overwhelm the nation's hospitals. Senator Robert Byrd. They're unprepared to handle large numbers of critically ill patients. And many in Congress say a lot more has to be done to make the U.S. safer. In Washington, I'm Skip Lozier. Back to you. There are potential changes in traffic patterns for Main Street. At the Clarion Borough Council meeting last night, Council Member Earl Zarafos proposed that 7th Avenue be changed to a right turn only intersection. The, right, the reason for the proposed change due to the difficulty drivers are having pulling out onto Main Street. Yet some of the local businesses are afraid the proposed change will affect them. Other council members are afraid the possible traffic pattern change that could result from the 7th Avenue proposal. That wasn't the only issue discussed at last night's borough council meeting. Several other issues were brought before the council. With a wrap-up of the events is TV5, Mark Despotakis. Neighbors in Clarion Borough will see new parking meter rules on Main Street beginning this December. That was one of the first orders of business at last night's Clarion Borough Council meeting. Council approved a request from the Clarion Area Business Association to allow shoppers on Main Street to park for free from December 10th to January 1st. But starting on January 2nd, the plan to double parking fines from $1 to $2 will go into effect. We don't put money in the parking meters in town to make money. That's not our goal. Our goal is to create a turnover so that there are more potential parking spaces. Skateboarding is back in the news. Council discussed the possibility of confiscating skateboards from those riding them on Main Street. No official action was taken, but the plan could call for confiscating skateboards for up to six months after repeated offenses. Trick-or-treating in the borough at 8 p.m. on October 31st. If you wish to participate in those events, the Clarion Borough Public Works Department is moving, and in the process of moving, they have come across surplus equipment. Borough Manager Carol Lapinto announced that the sale of the equipment could come at the end of this month. And if you would like to see any of that equipment before the sale, Contact Borough Manager Carol Lapinto at the Clarion Borough offices. In the newsroom, Mark Esadakis, TV5 News. Many Americans already nervous after the September 11th attacks were a little edgier today after a passenger cut the throat of a bus driver. 
six people were killed, including the attacker, when the Greyhound bus crashed near Manchester, Tennessee. Federal officials say this appears to be an isolated incident, not a terrorist act. But as a precaution, for much of the day, Greyhound shut down bus services nationwide. Eric Phillips reports from the scene of the crash. Well, good evening. Federal authorities say what happened here along Interstate 24 this morning was not linked to the September 11th terrorist attacks in New York City and Washington, D.C. So although bus service was halted nationwide all morning long, Greyhound buses are now rolling once again while the investigation into exactly what happened here continues. Although some were proceeding hesitantly, passengers began boarding Greyhound buses again this afternoon, still fresh on their minds, the crash that happened early this morning in Tennessee. The bus was traveling from Louisville, Kentucky to Atlanta, Georgia. Authorities have gathered some of the details of the events before the crash. They say one of the 38 passengers on board began asking repeatedly, what time is it? He asked a female passenger to give up her seat, and he began to question the driver about the route he was taking. Then he used a razor or box cutter to slit the throat of the driver. The assailant then grabbed the steering wheel, causing the bus to plow through the median and into opposing lanes of traffic before flipping over. Six people are dead. The assailant was killed, and we don't know his identity, but authorities say he was carrying a Croatian passport. Bus service resumed this afternoon with Greyhound's president declaring it safe. The officials have assured me that they believe this tragic accident was the result of an isolated act by a single deranged individual. The driver was taken to a local hospital along with 32 others. He said to be in stable condition. We're told the bus driver was in good enough shape this morning after that crash to actually crawl out of the bus and go for help. And again, Greyhound officials are saying it's safe to travel on the buses, but they realize some may be a little apprehensive about that, and so just for today, they are offering full refunds to ticketed passengers who are planning on taking the bus today. In Manchester, Tennessee, Eric Phillips, back to you. With fall now upon us, the leaves have begun to pile on local lawns. The leaves have left local residents with covered lawns and no place to discard them. With the burning of the leaves discouraged, the Clarion Borough will be holding another leaf drop-off this year to deal with the fallen leaves. The drop-off will take place between October 1st and December 1st on Liberty Street. Only borough residents are allowed to make use of this drop-off program. The attack on America that occurred on September 11th have left many, including local residents, wondering what terrorism is and how the U.S. should fight this new kind of war. Clarion University will, be, will hold a panel discussion to help residents and students understand the local complex issue. The gathering will focus on understanding terrorism and the U.S. response. The public forum will be held at 7 p.m. tomorrow night in Hart Chapel. The event is free and open to the public. The Mill Creek Township Maintenance Garage was destroyed by fire yesterday evening. By the time the Mill Creek Fire Department arrived on the scene, the building was already engulfed in flames. Firefighters wanted to contain the blaze to the remote building and prevent a forest fire. Fuel tanks, along with a sawdust pile located near the 6,000 square foot structure, were a concern. Water from four nearby ponds was used to douse the flames. Yet all the township's maintenance equipment was destroyed in the fire. Among the items lost were a road grader, backhoe, and three trucks. However, the building and equipment were fully insured. TV5 News Live has more to come. Coming up, Pennsylvanians can now go online to see their public schools and how well you are doing. Does your son or daughter want to attend a governor's school? Well, the applications are now out. We will tell you where you can get one. And later, Bill Reinhart will join us with the TV5 Sports Report. This portion of the programming was made possible through a grant by Fox's Pizza Den. Fox's Pizza Den is located on Old Route 66 in Clarion and offers all-day delivery. Phone 226-5555. That's 226-5555. Fox's Pizza Den is open seven days a week for your convenience. Phone 226-5555.
Wardrobe for some TV5 news anchors provided by Fashion Bug, located in the Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all, with many different styles. Fashion Bug also offers wide selection of accessories. Fashion Bug is located in the Clarion Mall, just off of Exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m., and Sunday from noon till 5. This portion of the program is made possible through a grant from Clarion Hospital. Clarion Hospital is located off of Exit 9 of Interstate 80. Clarion Hospital offers outpatient services, transitional care, as well as an emergency room open around the clock every day of the year. More than 400 employees and 80 physicians work to serve the community. Call the Clarion Hospital at 226-9500. Clarion Hospital, providing health care to Clarion County and surrounding communities since 1954. Do you want complete coverage of local, state, national, and international news as it happens? Then tune in to Clarion's very own TV5 News Live for complete coverage of the Clarion area and our world. TV5 News crews join with crews from the world's news leader, CNN, to provide complete coverage of the day's events. With advanced satellite capabilities, TV5 News can bring you the latest news as it happens. So tune in every Tuesday and Wednesday night for Clarion's very own TV5 News Live. Welcome back. Beginning tonight, parents and other interested taxpayers can log on to the Internet and find out if they're getting their money's worth out of local public schools. By logging on to www.ses.standardandpoor's.com, parents will be able to view a detailed written analysis as well as more than 100 additional pages of data for each school district in the Commonwealth. The Parents' Corner includes information on student test scores spending, learning environment, revenue, taxes, debt, and demographics. Users also can compare their school district against the county, state, and intermediate unit. Applications for the eight 2002 Pennsylvania Governor's Schools Excellence have arrived in, arrived in local high schools. High school sophomores and juniors in Pennsylvania who demonstrate artistic or academic talent are eligible to apply. The resident program takes place for five weeks during the summer on college campuses. The cost of tuition, room and board, classroom materials, and program activities are provided by the Commonwealth. If you have any questions, you can call the Governor's School of Excellence Information Hotline at 570-524-5244, or you can contact them on the web at www.pgse.org. Swiss Air's battle to stay alive is just the latest in the sharing of crisis with the airlines industry. British Airways said today it saw terrible buildings indicate a percent fall in traffic, and passengers' business in September dropped 22 percent from the year earlier. Sonia Sequeira reports what's looking like a rough ride for the Europe European airlines in the months ahead. <laughs> And with the added cost of increased security, ticket prices are on the rise. In the wake of September's US terrorist attack, it's hardly surprising that passenger traffic has slowed dramatically. The high-profile troubles of Swiss Air are reverberating through the industry. The question of who's next was soon answered as Belgium's Sabina filed for bankruptcy protection. The Belgian government has stepped in to keep the carrier afloat, but it's clearly flouting European regulations. But technically, Sabina is already in breach of the European Union's rules on state aid. Um, and the European Union will be looking at that very closely over the coming days to work out just how much of a precedent is being set. And it really needs to decide now whether it's going to permit this and permit other state aid or keep the door firmly closed. The EU is in a tricky situation. Washington is ploughing up to $15 billion into the US airline industry in aid and loans and European carriers are concerned about keeping a level playing field. With good reason. European international passenger traffic fell 0.8% in August. And the Association of European Airlines has already warned these figures are of little value since the US attacks. And it's still too early to predict the impact on travel and tourism. We have absolutely no idea when things are going to go back to, to normal. There is, there is no point making any forecasts at the moment. The, the world is, is still very much upside down. There are some signs of recovery in terms of hotel bookings and, and, and that kind of thing, but it, it's, it's, I think that's clutching at optimistic straws. 
Brussels will take some time to decide on whether governments will have the power to step in and help airlines out. Until then, European airlines are taking their own measures to limit the damage. Lufthansa British Airways and Air France among the big name carriers cutting capacity, particularly on flights to North America. KLM is expected to follow suit this Thursday. Sonia Sequeira, CNN Financial News, London. Stocks soared today, boosted by a triple dose of upbeat news, including some better-than-expected economic data. News of a U.S. government economic stimulus package worth up to $75 billion. The Nasdaq Composite Index closed the session up about 88 points, while the Dow Jones Industrial Average finished today's session up about 173 points, adding to Tuesday's 114-point rally generated by the Federal Reserve's half-point rate cut. The cut brought the federal funds rate, the interest that banks charge each other on overnight loans, to a near 40-year low of 2.5%. It was warm and sunny today, but is the nice weather going to be around for a short time? Stephanie Dugan joins us with a look at TV5's Weather Center forecast. Stephanie? Thanks, ladies. As you looked outside today, it looked and felt like a normal August day, with no clouds in the skies and temperatures near 80. Right now it's about 72, so it's still looking good, and this evening will look just as nice. So as you can see, the clouds were only to our southeastern part of the state, and they, are not, they will not be moved into our portion until tomorrow. As you can see, the clouds are still to our north and off to our, yes, uh, excuse me, off to our west yet, so they won't be moving in until at least tonight or tomorrow morning, which will make for a partly cloudy Thursday. So next, our front map will show us where the rain is and where we'll be headed to so there'll be no clouds or rain in the forecast. The rainy weather will come along with a high pressure system that is moving in and will bring us cooler temperatures starting tomorrow and into the weekend. So the rain will not be here until Friday, but a partly cloudy Thursday will still leave chance for showers. So your Thursday looks like a partly cloudy day with highs only in the lower 70s is still fairly nice. As you can see, the, high, the low pressure system will be moving out and the high pressure system We'll move along into the eastern portion, eastern portion of the nation, which will bring us our clouds and our cooler temperatures for the weekend, and also our rainy Friday and a partly cloudy Thursday. So throughout the five days, it's going to be still fairly nice tomorrow with high of 72, and your Friday showers at a high of 59, your Saturday and Sunday both in the lower 50s at 52 and 55, and Monday sunny but cool with a high of 55. So get out there while it's still nice while you can, and that's all I have from here. Back to you, ladies. Thanks, Stephanie. Since the attacks on the U.S., an international crackdown has frozen tens of millions of dollars possible terrorist assets in the U.S. and overseas banks. Lisa Barron reports that the worldwide freeze is just part of the prolonged campaign. Bin Laden. This morning. The September 11th attacks, though, unleashed a global offensive against money laundering, with many countries in Asia taking unprecedented steps. We've got the same mechanism, but what we'll have is a new political will to pursue it. What has always happened with money laundering and issues to that, of that ilk is haven jurisdictions have arisen. So you have situations with offshore jurisdictions that have not been cooperative. The Philippines was among those named by the International Financial Action Task Force as not cooperative. Then, last Saturday, the Philippines enacted an anti-money laundering law, giving the government the power to freeze funds thought to come from illicit sources. Japan, Pakistan, Thailand, Australia, and New Zealand are all on the list of 19 countries that have actually ordered banks to freeze assets. Japanese authorities are also set to propose a law forcing banks to step up background checks on customers. I think there's going to be a lot of pressure put on people to, to toe the line. Uh, to take action. I think there's going to be a lot more resources put into it. Um, it's, one of the, it's one of the key areas where you can fight terrorism and organized crime. Singapore is also conducting daily surveillance of its financial markets to guard against illegal trading activities. Hong Kong says it's ready to freeze any assets it finds linked to bin Laden once regulations are implemented later this month. Hong Kong would work with the international community on this. It would have to work with both the uh, U.S. investigation and international investigations that are ongoing. In those instances, we're looking at good human intelligence and good signals. So far, in Asia, only Myanmar and Indonesia, the world's biggest Muslim country, have not agreed to cooperate. Still, Asian regulators face a unique challenge, how to crack down on the region's vast underground banking system, which is unlike anything else in the rest of the world. 
Lisa Barron, CNN, Hong Kong. Bad weather is pushing back the timetable for raising the wreck of the Russian nuclear submarine Kursk. Rough seas have slowed down the progress of divers attaching cables to the Kursk from a barge that will be used to winch the submarine to the surface. The Dutch led team had hoped the winching could begin this week, but now it will not be possible to begin the operation until next week. And the divers are in a race against time with winter weather closing in on the Barents Sea where the Kursk sank. The Kursk, one of Russia's most modern nuclear-powered submarines, sank in August 2000, killing all 118 sailors on board while on exercises in the Barents Sea. The Pittsburgh Penguins open the 2001-2002 season tonight with the Colorado Avalanche at Mellon Arena. TV 5's Bill Reinhardt has the story in the TV 5. Well, as of tonight, regular season NHL play begins, and what be team better to do it than the Pittsburgh Penguins? The Penguins kick off their 35th anniversary season as they host last year's Stanley Cup winners, the Colorado Avalanche. Overall, the Penguins are 15, 13, and 6 in home openers, but only 1, 3, and 1 in the past five years. We are here with Mario to tell you all about it. Well, obviously, it's, uh, it's going to be a special night uh, uh, to remember the people uh, in New York and in Washington and here in Pennsylvania. So uh, I think that uh, the organization has got a little something planned uh, before the game and, and uh, uh, just in memory of the, the people that we lost. Is that something that will I mean, give both teams, you guys, a little more emotion? I mean, that happened with the Steelers last week. I know you're going to have fans in, in the white shirts. And, yeah, I think it's going to be special for everybody uh, here in the building and people watching. So so uh, um, I think it's going to make a big difference. There, there's some drastic change in the locker room here, one very big one. <laughs> How long does it take a team to begin to feel what kind of chemistry you have, what's there, what isn't? Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, you know, it takes time. Every time you make big changes, it's going to take time for the team to adjust. Uh, not only we... Uh, uh, traded Yager, but uh, we get uh, a lot of new faces and a lot of young guys who haven't uh, played in the NHL before and have no experience. So, um, you know, every time you have that, you have new line mates and, and uh, new defensemen to uh, to get used to. It's it's going to take some time, but uh, we've been practicing for a while now, trying to look at each other and, and uh, get a feel for each other, and, and uh, it's been uh, it's been pretty good the last couple of weeks. Yes, and that game will be broadcast live on ESPN at 8 o'clock p.m. tonight. In other hockey news, once Penguin defender Paul Coffey retired after his 21st season in the NHL. Coffey won four Stanley Cups in his career with the NHL, one with the Penguins in 1991. Coffey has tallied 1,531 points in his NHL career, second best overall defenseman for all of the NHL. And with only five games left in the season, Barry Bonds is still stranded at number 69 home runs, just one short of Mark McGuire's record at 70. In Bond's last game, he went one for two and spent most of the game looking around at the strike zone and not directly at it. That's all the sports we have for Wednesday. I'm Bill Reinhardt. Now back to you, ladies. That is all for this edition of TV5 News Live. Don't forget to tune in tomorrow at 5.30 for a rebroadcast of the Autumn Leaf Festival Parade. And then stay tuned for TV5 News Live tomorrow at 8 with Pat Grace and Susan Honorad. For TV5 News, I'm Carrie LaPoo. And I'm Jackie Nealon. For everyone here at TV5, have a good night.